Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we have quite a special fruit to examine because this bad boy has been called the strongest Paramecia within the entire class and quite literally holds the power to destroy the world. And that fruit is the Gora Gora no Mi. The Gora Gora no Mi is a Paramecia type fruit that allows it to use it to craft vibrations, which is a fairly underwhelming but technically accurate description, as well as a great recipe for total chaos and destruction. In the series, it was consumed by a figure considered to be the strongest man in the world, Edward Newgate, AKA Whitebeard, and it was first introduced in the Marine for Dark. However, I should also say that this is one of those rare devil fruits in the series that has had multiple users, and during the events of Marineford, the power of the Gora Gora no Mi was inherited by one Marshal D. Teach, AKA Blackbeard. This fruit takes its name from a funky Japanese onomatopoeia, Gura Gura, which is allegedly the sound that describes loose or irregular shaking and generally unstable movement, such as those experienced during earthquakes. And so the realm of English takes full advantage of that earthquake idea with both Viz and Funimation choosing to label it as the Tremor Tremor fruit. Although I must say that I bet if four kids had made it to this point in the series in that darkest possible timeline, then my money is on the idea that they probably would have named it the Shaky Shaky fruit. All right, so the primary benefit of the Shaky Shaky Fruit, as stated before, is that it grants the user access to conjuring vibrations, like really big vibrations. In fact, one might even call them shockwaves. And as a result, this more or less gives the user the ability to create an array of natural disasters, such as earthquakes and tsunamis. So that's just a bit ridiculous, as it effectively turns you into something of a Greek god by granting you the powers of Poseidon. I mean, not that Poseidon, although that one is also incredibly powerful, but more like this guy here. And that really is not an statement. From everything we've been shown in the series thus far, this fruit is probably the single most destructive power in the entire world. And in fact, when you're up against someone with this fruit, the world can seem like an incredibly small battleground all of a sudden, as even Vice Admiral Suru has stated that there is absolutely nowhere one could retreat and be safe from the reach of the Gora Gora no Mi. But of course, with this power also comes the greatest weakness of the fruit, which is the staggering collateral damage that one has the potential to cause. Now, if you were someone who simply didn't care about the world or its inhabitants, then this would be much less of an issue, and we'll get to that idea in a bit. But for the large majority of us, we have things that we wish to protect, be it family, friends, animals, or even the homes we live in and the stuff that we own. But one misuse of the Gora Gora no Mi will take all of that away in an instant. To say that one has to be careful whilst wielding this fruit would be a gross understatement, and to add to this, it's not a power that's all that easy to train either, because every use does have the potential to cause incredible damage to the world around you. So exactly how one comes to be a master wielder of the Gora Gora no Mi is a bit of a tricky question, but I assume you'd have to sequester yourself off someplace far, far away. Ideally, probably another planet really. But I should also say that even if you were a completely selfish prick and did not care whatsoever for anyone or anything around you, this fruit still presents incredible danger to oneself because while the user may or may not be immune to the shockwaves generated by the fruit powers, one is certainly not immune to the after effects. So if you accidentally conjure a tsunami and you aren't a superhuman boss like Whitebeard, chances are you've probably just killed yourself. And of course the same goes for earthquakes and even more, I guess we'll call them mundane disasters that you have the potential to cause. Now luckily there are more focused ways to engage in the Gora Gora no Mi. For example, the user can conjure a condensed shockwave around a singular target, resulting in great power and far less collateral damage. And furthermore, it also seems possible to conjure the ability within a small separated spherical area and have the effects play out entirely within its own little realm, which is great because honestly, if neither of these things were possible, then consuming the Gora Gora no Mi would by and large result in devil fruit power that you could almost never use, if only for the fear of your own safety. But to get some first-hand experience of the one and only true master of the Gora Gora no Mi, it's time to turn to the strongest man in the world himself, Edward Newgate. Now first up, there is no doubt whatsoever that this devil fruit did contribute to Whitebeard's legend. However, it must be noted that every aspect of this man is also completely monstrous to the point where this devil fruit acted as more of an accessory. But Whitebeard knew exactly how to extract the full potential of the Gora Gora no Mi without going overboard and destroying gigantic chunks of the world. And not only that, but he also seems to have innovated it beyond crafting simple shockwaves, as he has also demonstrated the ability to literally grab the air around him and radically shift it, which resulted in a technique 
Luna's island shaking, which destabilized the entirety of Marineford and its surrounding sea, but without the fierce destructive force of a shockwave-induced natural disaster. In fact, it really was more of a technique designed to give Whitebeard an environmental advantage in battle, capable of completely throwing his opponents off their feet, and with no limit to the amount of individuals that he could choose to affect, as shown once again at Marineford, where close to 100,000 Marines were rendered almost entirely helpless for the duration of the attack. Not only that, but Whitebeard has also rather unconventionally put the fruit to great use by using it in concert with his Bicento, often choosing to coat its fearsome tip in a condensed shockwave bubble in order to significantly increase not only its pure attack power, but also the range of damage it was able to inflict. And Whitebeard further demonstrated his sheer intelligent use of the fruit on multiple subtle occasions, but the primary example that always comes to my mind is when he was able to protect himself from being frozen by Aokiji simply by summoning select vibrations around him. So to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think we'll ever see a better use of the Guru Guru no Mi than Whitebeard. However, to be fair, we should also examine its second user in the series, being Blackbeard. Now, as you can obviously tell by the name, this man is very much the antithesis of Whitebeard, and as a result, we have seen him wield the fruit in a very different manner, albeit briefly. And what we've gathered from that is that Blackbeard is a highly reckless individual with a near complete disregard for whatever is around him, and in a lot of cases, even disregard for himself. Blackbeard is a man who believes profoundly in fate, and so if we are ever going to see the destructive limits of the Guru Guru no Mi, then it will certainly be under his watch, as he is more than capable of summoning an apocalyptic disaster and then just seeing what fate has in store for him, which up until this point has actually been pretty damn favorable. Now, as for an awakening, ugh, I mean, seriously, what can an awakening do that this obsession? fruit can't already. I mean, I guess I should point out that it is entirely possible that everything we've seen and discussed is the result of an awakened devil fruit already, because Whitebeard is one of the finest combatants we've ever seen in the series on every single possible front, so for him not to have awakened his devil fruit would seem a bit off and lack some missed potential. Though there is always the chance that the base form of the Guru Guru no Mi only gives its user the ability to create more moderate shockwaves rather than world-ending catastrophes. However, the argument against that is that when Blackbeard became the wielder of the Guru Guru no Mi, it seemed like he had access to all of the abilities that Whitebeard had previously used. He just wasn't really able to control them. But that's the thing about awakening devil fruits. We really know nothing in relation to the process, but there is a thought out there that I'm quite fond of, which is that awakening a fruit does exactly that. It awakens the powers of the fruit, and then any subsequent reincarnation of the fruit would contain the awakened abilities by default, rather than the more commonly accepted idea that a user unlocks new abilities for the span of their use of the fruit. But barring all of that speculation, if what we've seen in the series thus far has nothing to do with the awakening form of the Guru Guru no Mi, then all I can say is that not only is the entire world at risk, but so is the entire universe. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a Tremor Human. Interestingly enough, the Guru Guru no Mi is another one of those fruits that the Gomu Gomu no Mi may hold a natural counter to, at least in terms of tanking shockwaves directly, because a rubber human may be able to absorb and or offset major damage caused by the abilities of the fruit. And before anybody tries to bring too much science into this, and yes, I know I started it, but let's be real, Luffy being immune to the Goro Goro no Mi also makes no sense in real life, so I wouldn't say that it was out of the realm of One Piece logic for that to be the case with the Goro Goro no Mi as well. And of course, the other utility used for the Guru Guru no Mi, which I know has been on all of your minds ever since this video began, is that a proficient user of the fruit could condense the shockwave so finely that they could effectively turn any object into some sort of custom vibrator. So no more batteries for the user of this fruit. To conclude, look, there is no denying the sheer destructive force that this fruit presents. It is unparalleled in the series, and other than potentially one of the ancient weapons, I don't see anything trumping it. As a result, I think this fruit gets rated incredibly highly amongst the One Piece fans base, and I'm not necessarily sure that it should. It's one of those with great power comes great responsibility type of deals, because once again, a simple misuse of this fruit could cost the lives of countless people and even the user themselves. And really, if I were presented with a random devil fruit, there are very few that I would just plain refuse to eat. I think that almost all of them possess wonderful power and potential use in many different aspects of life. However, the Guru Guru no Mi is probably one of those ones that I would refuse to eat. The power is just too dangerous, and even if you do master it, it's really not versatile enough if you aren't regularly engaging in high level combat. And vibrator jokes aside, it just doesn't have a lot of utility. It is a purely destructive existence, and I think that for everyone who isn't the strongest man in the world, most other devil fruits will provide you with significantly more fulfilling use. And with that, we are going to commit the Guru Guru no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time, we're going to be continuing the crazy world of Marineford Fruits by delving into the power held by Whitebeard's third division commander with the diamondy goodness of the Kira Kira no Mi.
If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Gora Gora no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Why do people like Ace so much when he lost every fight he has ever been in? So I'm not so sure about that. Ace only really lost to Blackbeard and I guess Akainu. Otherwise, in terms of combat, he, he's done all right. I mean, he fought Jinbei to a standstill for five days straight, and he beat Captain Blue Jam as a child with Dadan, of course. But to get to the heart of your question, it really has nothing to do with fights or much of anything of substance whatsoever. The weird thing to think about with Ace is that he really didn't do much of anything throughout his entire time in the series. He was a grand figure whose narrative played out in the background, and during the climax of his character, he spent 99% of that time chained up. Here's the thing though, none of that matters because when Oda designed Ace, he struck gold. Aesthetically, Ace probably has one of what I would call the coolest designs in the series, coupled with one of the most visually stunning devil fruits to wield. And he also has that Luffy-like personality quality about him, albeit a bit more serious. And I think it really is that simple. He just has great design and an appealing en masse personality. Nothing he actually did in the story is all that relevant to his popularity. How come that Momonosuke has eaten an artificial devil fruit and can still transform into his normal human form? Ah, right. So the thing about Momonosuke that does often get confused is that he ate Dr. Vegapunk's artificial devil fruit, not one of the smile fruits that Caesar Clown and Doflamingo were producing. Now, while Vegapunk himself considers this fruit a failure, it was definitely more on the right track than the smile fruits. So that's why Momonosuke actually has access to both a human and a beast form and very potentially even a hybrid form. Do you think Frankie needs to use the toilet? Look, I think that Frankie always needs to use the toilet. However, I wouldn't be surprised if within his cyborg body, he also built a toilet transformation mode in order to meet those needs on any occasion.